Assalamualaikum and good morning to all of you. Today, we will have a meeting to show the segmental reporting and interim reporting of IJM Corporation Berhad. My name is Nur Ain Hana Binti Roslan and I will explain about the company's background, disadvantages of segmental reporting, basis preparation of interim reporting and adjustment of inventories. My name is Wan Nur Adlina Binti Humat Najib. In this meeting, I will explain about the factor to consider having a segmental reporting Two accounting policies used by IGN Corporation Berhad in preparing interim report and the adjustment made in the third quarter. My name is Nur Shahira Binti Isa. In this meeting, I will explain about the type of segment in this company, who are the chief of decision making and what are their responsibilities, advantages of segmental report and the last one is type of interim report. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. My name is Sarah Amani Jawari and in this meeting, I will be explaining about way to identify operating segment that will be reportable segment, process to identify the reportable segment and non-reportable segment of IJM Corporation Berhad and I will show you a new segmental report of IJM Corporation Berhad that I will produce. Apart from that, I will be expanding about the period for the current and comparative of each statement prepared by IJM Corporation Berhad. IJM Corporation Berhad, IJM is a public limited company founded by Yap Lim Sen, Kuan Yu Lin, and Kuan Mun Chor. IJM was incorporated in 1983 with the merger of three mid-sized construction companies which are IGB Construction Sinan Berhad, Jurutama Sinan Berhad, and Muda Jaya Berhad. In 1996, the company was listed on Bursa Malaysia and now IJM ranks as one of Malaysia's leading conglomerates that is listed on the main market of Bursa Malaysia. The name of IJM was formed by taking the initial letter of the three mid-sized construction companies, names which are I from IGB Construction Berhad, T from Jurutama Sinan Berhad, and M from Muda Jaya Sinan Berhad. The company's core business activities and compass, construction, property development, industry including manufacturing and quarrying, infrastructure concessions, and plantation. IJM headquarters is located in Selangor, Malaysia, and the number of employees there is 3,796. The company closed its account on 31 March 2021, and its revenue for the financial year of 2021 is 5,622.87 million ringgit Malaysia. The company's mission is to become a leading Malaysian conglomerate in the markets we serve, and its mission is to deliver sustainable value to our stakeholders and enrich lives with the IGM mark of excellence. IGM's major aspirations have seen it establish a growing presence in neighboring developing markets with operations presently spanning eight countries, with primary focus is on the emerging economies of Malaysia, India, Middle East, and China. IGM has been awarded with many awards due to its phenomenal growth over the past four decades, such as BCI Asia Top 10 Developer Awards in Malaysia in 2020 and ASEAN Corporate Governance Call Award in 2019. Next, let's move to the type of segment in IJM Corporation Berhad. There are two types of segment, which business segment and geographical segment. A business segment is a subsection of a company's main operation that has formed its own product line. A business sector can be identified by the products or services offered. Examples of business segment in IJM Corporation Berhad are construction, property development, manufacturing and quarrying, plantation, infrastructure, investment and others. Aside from that, the technique of splitting customers into categories based on where they live and work is known as geographic segmentation. This can be done in a number of ways such as categorizing clients by country of origin or smaller geographic divisions. There are more than 10 countries that are involved in this company such as Malaysia, India, China, United Kingdom, Singapore and Indonesia. I will be presenting about management approach in view of factor to consider having a segment reporting. It consists of three factors. The first factor is nature of the business activities. It is identified by any activities carried out by an entity for the purpose of maximum profit in an entity. The second factor is the existence of managers responsible for the activities. The segment managers are responsible to monitor each segment that the entity engage in the business activities to ensure the entity has a good performance of each segment and report to the entity's Chief Operating Decision Maker, CODM. IGM Corporation Berhad, with almost four decades of success, 
the company holds leading across diversified business divisions. Hence, each division will be controlled by the divisional manager director to monitor its segment's performance. The last factor is information presented to the board of directors. Chief operating division makers must report in a manner consistent with the internal reporting all information about each operating segment and the overall performance of the entity to the board of director (BOD). It will help the board of director to make the decision about segmental performance in the entity as board of director is responsible for the long-term success of the company and the delivery of sustainable value to the stakeholders and gain profit for the entity through business activities. There are several factors to consider having a segment reporting. The first factor is the nature of products and services. IGM Corporation Berhad's core business are construction, property, manufacturing, plantation, infrastructure and investment. Each division of the company provides different products to their customers in the market. The second factor is the nature of production processes. For the construction, it is the IGM's Corporation Berhad core business and has been the face of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. The example of construction building that is carried out by the IGM Corporation Berhad are Uptown 8 Office Tower and Damansara Uptown. For property, IGM Land Berhad develops vacant land in Malaysia into sprawling township, commercial buildings and high-rise condominiums. This division has six township development. Next, for manufacturing, IGM is the largest operators in Malaysia that focus on production of industrial used tool. Lastly, for infrastructure, IGM's infrastructure division was an asset in its own right with long-term recurring revenue, generation capabilities and investment that could be monetized. The company involved in toll highways and port operation business. The next factor is the type of class of customer for the product or service. IGM sustainability recognized to meet the expectation of stakeholders which are shareholders, investors, suppliers, customers or lenders. The last factor is the method used to distribute the product or services. For construction, IGM linked to many high-profile construction such as Financial District to Razak H Chain TRS. Next, for property, IGM land is known as largest property developers in Malaysia. For manufacturing, IGM export ICP piles to many markets including USA, Canada, Singapore, Maldives and Vietnam. While for the plantation, IGM sold the palm oil to the market with the higher commodity price. Lastly, for the infrastructure, IGM is expertise in building transportation system, power plants and water treatment facilities to help the commodities in the cities and countries where the company operates. Then, I will share with you the Chief of Decision Making and its responsibilities. The Chief of Decision Making's main responsibilities include allocating resources and evaluating the performance of each operating segment. The Board of Directors, the CEO, the Senior Management Team or the COO could be all involved. The title of CODM are irrelevant as long as they are the ones who make strategic decisions about the entity's divisions. They are responsible for managing the organization from the top if they fail to execute their task and it will result in the company's loss. Here are all the persons in charge to direct and control the business operation. They are also responsible for giving strategic advice and direction to the board in order to ensure that the company can achieve their goals. Besides that, they need to analyze any problematic situation and occurrences because they have to provide the best solution to ensure that the company can survive and grow. Now, I will proceed with a way to identify operating segment that will be reportable segment which have to be disclosed separately. According to the MFRS 8 operating segment, an entity is required to report its information separately with regard to the reporting segment only if it passed the quantitative threshold test of 10% and 75%. In this case, we have two tests. First is the quantitative threshold test or known as 10% test and the second one is 75% total revenue requirement. For the 10% threshold test, it has three bases of measurement which are revenue basis, profit or loss basis and asset basis. For 75% total revenue requirement, this test will only be applicable for revenue basis. Other operating segments that do not meet the 10% threshold test will not be classified as reportable segment and are to be combined and disclosed under all other segment categories. In this case, the basis of measurement that will be applied to IGM Corporation Berhad is revenue basis. The revenue basis will be based on the reported revenue which include 
Sales to External Customer Plus in the segment sales. IGM Corporation Berhad has been defining its operating segment as construction, property development, manufacturing and quarrying, plantation, infrastructure and investment and others. As we can see from the calculation in the table, construction, property development, manufacturing and quarrying, plantation and infrastructure will be considered as reportable segment as this operating segment meets the requirement of at least 10% or more for the 10% threshold test using the revenue basis. On the contrary, investment and others will not be classified as reportable segment and are to be disclosed under all other segment category because each percentage, which is 5%, does not meet the requirement of 10% threshold test. Once done with the 10% test, we need to proceed with the 75% total revenue requirement test. This reportable operating segment covers 99.99% of the company's total external revenue. Hence, IJM Corporation Berhad meets the 75% revenue coverage threshold and no additional operating segment are to be disclosed. As a result from the calculation made previously using the revenue basis, there are five reportable segments to be included in the segment report which comprises of construction, property development, manufacturing and quarrying, plantation and infrastructure. Meanwhile, investment and others will be disclosed as all other segments in the segment report of IJM Corporation Merahat as it failed to meet the 10% threshold test requirement according to the revenue basis. Move to the next slide. This is the original segmental report provided by IJM Corporation Berhad in their annual report using the profit or loss as the basis for the 10% threshold test. As a comparison, we can see that while the company used profit or loss as their basis, all the operating segments need to be a reportable segment as it meets the 10% threshold test requirement. In this case, no segment need to be disclosed as all other segments compared to when we use revenue as the basis for the 10% threshold test. As a conclusion, I will share with you the advantages and disadvantages of segmental reporting. There are three advantages of segmental reporting, which are the first one is segmental reporting improves our understanding of financial statement by allowing us to evaluate the performance of each segment and revealing which sector are more profitable and which are trains on the company's bottom line. If the segment reporting reveals that a company's international operations are more profitable than its local, it could prompt a change in the strategic direction. Aside from that, segmental reporting makes it easy to identify profit-making and loss-making divisions since it gives investors all the information they need. Segmental reports allow users to focus on organization's future profitability. Finally, it enables potential investors in making better and more effective investment decision by allowing them to assess the company's ability to generate revenue by analyzing relevant data. It also provides more detailed examination of the organization's risk and returns as well as a tool to help investors better understand the business and its future cash flow. Next, disadvantages of segmental reporting. The first one is the cost of preparing segment reporting is high. A reporting company has to incur costs in developing, preparing, and providing segment information to external users which may be too high. The second one is it is time consuming as there are too many information required to disclose in the financial statement. Since every base of segmentation may create segments differently, the method of reporting intersegment transactions are also different for each organization. And the last one is potential detriment to the reporting company of disclosing information about individual segments. Presenting results of segment operations to external users could lead to competitive damage. Confidential information will be revealed to competitors about profitable or unprofitable products, plans for the products, or entries into new markets, apparent weaknesses which might induce competitors to increase their own efforts to take advantage of their weakness. Basis Preparation of Interim Reporting The Interim Financial Report has been prepared in accordance with MFRS 134 Interim Financial Reporting and Paragraph 9.22 of Main Market Listing Requirements of Bursa Malaysia Securities for High. The Interim Financial Report should be read in conjunction with the audited financial statements of the group for the year ended 31 March 2020. The interim reporting financial statements of the group comprises the statement of financial position of the group as at 31 December 2020, the statement of comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity, and the statement of cash flows for the financial period ended at 31 December 2020 have not been audited. The two accounting policies used by ICM Corporation Berhad in preparing interim report are property plan and equipment and inventories. For property, plan and equipment, 
IGN Corporation Berhad use cost model to measure property, plant and equipment and it will depreciate on straight line basis over its estimated useful life. Next, for inventories, it is measured at the lower of cost and net realizable value. Now, I will explain to you the type of interim report in IJM Corporation Berhad. Interim report are financial reports that are produced by the company to cover a period of less than a year. In IJM Corporation Berhad, they choose to produce a quarterly report which consists of unaudited financial statements. The purpose of producing an interim report is to keep shareholders and analysts more involved and in regular contact with business management, as well as to notify the public of major company developments in timely manner. As for IJM Corporation Berhad, they produce few condensed financial statements such as statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity, statement of financial position, and statement of cash flow. It usually combined into a single document. These condensed financial statements are designed to give a snapshot of a company's financial situation with minimum detail and are often only used internally. Now, we will identify the current and comparative for each statement prepared by the company. IJM Corporation Berhad Financial Year End is on 31st March 2021. Since IJM Corporation Berhad prepared their interim report on a quarterly basis, we have agreed to choose the third quarter of their interim report that ended on 31st December 2020. To begin with, the current interim period for SOFP, which consists of 3 months, will start on 1st October 2020 until 31st December 2020, whereas comparative SOFP of the end of immediately preceding financial year end is 12 months from 1st April 2019 to 31st March 2020. Next, for the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, it is current interim is 3 months from 1st October 2020 to 31st December 2020. The cumulative SOPL and OG for the current financial year to date is 9 months from 1st April 2020 to 31st December 2020. The comparative SOPL and OG of immediately preceding financial year for current interim is 3 months from 1st October 2019 to 31st December 2019, while the comparative SOPL and OG of immediately preceding financial year for year to date is 9 months from 1st April 2019 until 31st December 2019. After that, the cumulative statement of changes in equity for the current financial year to date is 9 months from 1st April 2020 to 31st December 2020, while the cooperative SOCHI of immediately preceding financial year year to date is 9 months from 1st April 2019 until 31st December 2019. Lastly, the cumulative statement of cash flow for the current financial year to date is 9 months from 1st April 2020 until 31st December 2020, whereas the cooperative of statement of cash flow of immediately preceding financial year year to date is 9 months starting from 1st April 2019 until 31st December 2019. Now, we will see the adjustment in the third quarter by using this financial statement as at 31st March 2020. The first adjustment is about depreciation. On 1st April 2020, IGM Corporation Berhad's plant machinery equipment and vehicles cost is at 1,940,857,000 with its accumulated depreciation amounting 1,030,223,000. The company depreciate all of its plant machinery, equipment and vehicles on straight line basis at 20% per annum on a yearly basis and not in the year of disposal. However, on 1st June 2020, one of its machine with a carry amount of 230 million was disposed for a profit of 20 million. The machine was purchased at cost of 400 million. On 31st December 2020, IGM Corporation Berhad acquired a new machine with a cost of 450 million. For this disposal, the carrying amount of all machine will be recognized, and the new machine acquired will be capitalized as a part of machinery since it follow the requirement of MFRS 116 property plan and equipment. Thus, the carrying amount as at 31st December 2020 is 809,905,450. Second adjustment, inventories. On 1 April 2020, IGM Corporation Berhad had an empty inventory of RM7,687,014,000 in the third quarter of the year. The company had purchased inventories at a total cost of RM250,000,000 and the net lessable value as at 31 December 2020 is RM200,000,000 and the financial year end for IGM Corporation Berhad is 31 March 2021. On 31 December 2020, the value of inventory should be recognized 
at its net investable value of 200 million ringgit in the statement of financial position as it is lower compared to the cost of 250 million ringgit. The loss of inventories amounting 15 million ringgit should be recognized in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income as expenses. This is the after adjustments for the third quarter of statement of financial position as at 31 December 2020 of IJM Corporation Berhai. The current interim is for 3 months period from 1 October 2020 until 31 December 2020 while comparative from 1 April 2019 until 31 March 2020. Comparative refers to the periods of the statement of financial position at the end of the immediately preceding financial year of 2020. That's all from us. Thank you. Thank you.